The fastest way to use SDXL1. Only 9.3 seconds. Hello, my friends. How are you doing? Yesterday, I showed you in this video how to use it in Automatic 11.11, including a sick trick of only using the refiner and still get really cool results. But today, we're going to check out the fastest method. This is using ConfUI, but it will make it super easy for you. Now, for everybody who can't afford that sweet, sweet NVIDIA GPU gold, I will also show you how to use ConfUI inside of Google Colop. Let's get started. So the first thing you need, of course, is going to be ConfUI. I will link this page below. And when you scroll down a little bit, it says you're immediately installing ConfUI. Click on that and you will be super surprised by what you see here. You have Windows and it says it is a portable standalone build for Windows. So you only need to download this 7-zip file and then run it. And then you have ConfUI. UI, it could not be easier. Then below that, you will also see there is an AMD GPU version that needs Linux, sadly, but you can still run it so you can have ConfUI and use SDXL today. If you already have ConfUI on your system, I would highly suggest to you that you go into the update folder. There are two different bets in here, the update ConfUI bet and the update ConfUI and Python dependencies bet. So you can run either of them to update your ConfUI version. After this has run through, of course, we're going to go back to the main folder. And in here you have run NVIDIA GPU bat. So you want to double click on that and open that up. Now, when we go back to the ConfUI GitHub page for a second, you can see we have your link that is set ConfUI examples. You want to click on this and this will give you some powerful, mind blowing, sweet, sweet examples of different node builds. And one of them is the SDXL build. When you click on that, you're going to be greeted by two beautiful images. Now, where is the build? What are we going to do with this? Well, here's the thing. If you create images with ConfUI, it not only includes all of your parameters, it includes the complete complete build with all of the nodes, everything you build up. This is genius, my friend. So download this image and save it on your drive. And then when you start ConfUI, you only have to drag that image into the canvas like I will show you right now. You're going to be greeted with this. This is called the canvas where you build all of your nodes. And on the right side here, you have controls where you can save this in a JSON file if you want to have it extra as a build. There is a Q prompt button up here that is for generating your AI images and so on. But the most important part here is you have here your folder with the image that you've downloaded from the page. Take that image and drop it into the canvas and boom, there we have it. You have all of the nodes in here. This is just amazing. Now, as long as you are with your mouse in an empty part of the canvas, you can use your mouse wheel to zoom in and out. And this build is really useful also for beginners because you can see here that a lot of these parts have descriptions of what is actually going on, but also they are here in placeholder boxes that have a title over them. So you're on top of that seeing what is going on. Now here it will already say that you have a checkpoint loaded in here, but this might only be a placeholder text. So you still have to click in here and load it from your models folder either inside of ConfUI or inside of Automatic 11.11. And at this point, you will realize something that is absolutely magical. You can use several models at the same time in the same window. By the way, one side note here, if you want to load your models from another folder, like from Automatic 11.11, you have here a description on the GitHub page on how to do that. It says, see the config file to set the search paths for models in this standalone Windows build, you can find this file in the ConfUI directory, rename it's this file to extra model pathways YAML and edit it with your favorite text editor. Of course, you can download it from this link here. So we can click on that. You see on the right side, the download button. So you can click on that and then simply save that. Remove the example at the end. So this is ending at .yaml and save it inside of your ConfUI folder. Then when you right click on this file, you can see you can edit this. I'm using Notepad++. 
ask for that. This is a free editor and it's really useful. When you open it up, it looks like this. So you can set here the location for your checkpoint files, for the VAE files, for the LoRa's and so on, and then simply save it and restart ComViewi. So now that everything is done like this and we have this node built here for SDXL and you have actually selected from the list here on the left side your base model and here on the right side your refiner model, you can basically start rendering. Down here, you have the text prompts, positive prompt, negative prompt. Everything is described for you. It is really easy. You don't need to rewire anything or change anything. Just put in the prompts here you want to use and test out SDXL. The rendering is going to be really, really fast. And here you have the render time while I'm not recording. It is only 9.3 seconds with a 4080 NVIDIA GPU. But of course, on my channel, as you know, you get a quick rundown of what is actually going on so you have a better understanding on how this is actually working out. So you have here the positive prompt and the negative prompt. This is used both for the base model and the refiner model. But because the base model and the refiner model are treating text differently, we have to encode them with the specific model. So as you can see here, for example, for the positive prompt, this is going here into a clip text encoder. Now this clip text encoder encoder is also connected up here to our base model. And of course, this has to happen for the positive prompt. This is here in green and then the negative prompt, which is here in red. Now, then we have a render section that is basically what you have as the settings inside of automatic 1111. So you can see here it's called a K sampler. Here we have the information of the model, the positive and the negative prompt. You have the latent image, which is basically basically the resolution of what you want to render. You have the amount of steps as an external input and then also the end step. The reason for the end step here is because the base model is only rendered an amount of the total amount of steps and then the rest of these steps is done with the refiner model. This is very different from what you are doing with automatic 1111 because in automatic 1111 the process is actually not the correct process because it is creating a pixel image and then rendering this pixel image again in image to image. While in ComfyUI, it is staying as a latent image. A latent image doesn't have image information in it. It is these kind of latent data points that the AI is creating. And only at the last step, it is converted into a pixel image. Now, you have seen here that we are loading latent image steps and end at step. Now, where are these cables going? You can see here we have the empty latent image. This is basically a noise setup. And here we have a resolution of 1024 by 1024, batch size one. We are going to render one image. Here is an extra information of the sizes that are recommended to be used with SDXL 1.0. Now here on the right side, we have an extra box for step control. You can see here we have 25 steps. These are the total steps. And then down below we have end step 20, which means that the base model is rendering for 20 steps and then the refiner is rendering the last five steps of that process. So when we go on in that process, and again, you have your big text box that is going to explain to you a little bit more about the case sampler. Read that if you're interested in that. You can see that we have here an output as a latent and we are going to go into the second sampler because here everything is happening in one go because this is based on nodes and you can build crazy AI machines with this. So this is going to be the process for our refiner. Again, we have a model input from the refiner. We have a positive and negative prompt. This is now rendered with the clip model of the refiner. So when we look over here, you can see that we have the input here from text from the positive prompt in green, the negative prompt in red, and then the clip model coming out here of the refiner model so that this is encoding the text with the refiner model. Now this is going into the K sampler. And then of course, as the last step, what do we need? We need to convert it from a latent 
into an actual pixel image. This is done with the VAE decoder. So now just by looking at these steps, you understand a lot more about what is actually going on with AI, how AI is actually working. So you can see here from the samples, this is the latent that's coming in here. And the VAE we are using is actually also the refiner model. And this only at the last step is turning it into this beautiful pixel image. To start the rendering over on the right side, you click here on the Q prompt and wait until it is finished. Now, the amazing thing is if you don't have a strong GPU, if you don't have a good computer, you can use Google Colab to use that. You have a certain amount of GPU time that you can use for free, but this is going to be a slow GPU, so it's not really going to be much of a help. But you can also go with the Google call up pro plan. Now here they have a subscription. I would only suggest that to you if you really use it a lot. On the other hand, you can buy computer units here. I was told that about 13 computer units is one hour of computing time for the GPU with a really good GPU like the A100. And these units will stay active for three months. So you have ample time to use them up. Now the way to use this is also very, very simple. When you go back to the GitHub page, you see here the Colab notebook. Here is a link to open with Google Colab. Simply click on that. Of course, for this, you need a Google account. And on the right side here, you can connect to a GPU. So you want to click on this to start the connection. You can see on the right side that right now I'm connected to a V100 GPU. And this means I'm paying approximately 5.36 units per hour. So I'm getting even more time out of that. Of course, the V100 is going to be a bit slower than the A100. Now on the left side, you have here a lot of text, but you don't have to pay much attention to that. You only have to click here on this play button and wait until there is a green hook next to it. This is going to give you a warning, but click here on run anyway. There's no problem because this is the official link from the ComfyUI guys. So this is the first step here. You can see it took me 25 seconds. Now below that, you see a long list of different kind of models and things you can use here. And this is selected as the 1.5 model. So you don't want to have that, but you can see that all of the lines with a hashtag in front of it are green, which means they are not used. So in this case, we're gonna put here a hashtag in front of the 1.5 line. Instead, we're gonna download the SDXL base and refiner model. So we're going to delete the hashtags here so that the lines turn white. Also, you want to scroll down here a little bit. We don't need a VAE because this is included in the SDXL model, but we maybe want to use down here the LoRa for SDXL offset, which is this line. So we want to delete that. Now again, click on the play button and you can see that this is starting the download. Now, because this is a virtual server from Google, the download is happening incredibly incredibly fast. Next, we're going to need to install the local tunnel. Don't worry, this doesn't install anything on your drive. It's still running only in the browser. So again, you go here, you click on that play button and wait for it to finish. And down here, this is how we get our interface for the UI. There's a link provided here for this page. And then also you have here this kind of IP number. So you need to copy that and then click on the link. This will bring you to this link here. And then you put in here your IP. This is generated every time you're using this. And we are in the same canvas we have seen before. And this already is loading some stuff here, but we are not going to use that because I'm going to provide a file for you linked below this video. So you want to go over here on the right side to this part. And here is a load button. Click on that. And then you want to load the SDXL1 workflow JSON that I'm providing you. This is the same as from the GitHub page. So load that. 
And now we have exactly the same setup that I just told you about with all of the settings in here. Now here's one thing you need to do for this to work. You need to go in here and even so this already says SDXL base model. You need to click on that list and select it again. And then over here do the same thing with the refiner model so that they are actually loaded. Then you go down here, write your prompt and negative prompt and you already are done and you can start ready. So over to the right, you can actually zoom in here to see the image a little bit nicer and simply click here on cue the prompt. You can see that the image has rendered here and it is really beautiful, very detailed. Look at that. We have captured a landscape in a bottle. Here is the beautiful image I've rendered on my computer even while I'm recording this video. That's it for today. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more like that. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.